Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Sabbath message, I want to talk to you about a scripture found in the Book of Avar. For those unfamiliar with the Book of Avar, that is a book that I compiled using documents from Joseph Smith's time period. It kind of goes over the coming forth of the Book of Mormon and has some various testimonies of the translation process and such in a story format. I wouldn't consider it to be 100% accurate historically because it's meant more for spiritual growth than to teach history. But I want to go over chapter one and in this chapter, Joseph Smith's mother has a vision, Lucy Max Smith. So Lucy Max Smith retires to a grove where she prays the Lord on behalf of her husband that the true gospel might be presented to him and that his heart might be softened to receive it. She then returns home and goes to bed. She falls asleep and has a dream. In the dream, she sees a large and beautiful meadow, and it's not unfamiliar to her because it's one near her house. In the meadow is a pure and clear stream of water, which is running through it. She follows the stream and discovers two trees sitting on the same side of the stream. The trees are very beautiful and very well proportioned and towered majestically to great heights. They are large with magnificent branches and just look luxurious and, and grand. So she's looking at them with wonder and admiration. And after a time, she sees that one of them is surrounded by a belt of light. It's shining like gold, but more brilliant. And then a gentle breeze passes by and the tree is encircled with this golden zone, as she puts it bending gracefully before the wind and waving its beautiful branches in the air. As the wind increases, the tree assumes a lovely and animated appearance and seems to express in its motions the utmost joy and happiness. She says, if it had been an intelligent creature, it could not have conveyed by the power of language the idea of joy and gratitude so perfectly as it did. And even the stream that rolled beneath it shared apparently every sensation felt by the tree. For as the branches danced over the stream, it would swell gently, then recede again with a motion as soft as the breath of an infant, but as lively as the dancing of a sunbeam. So the belt is also moving in unison with the motion of the stream and the tree, and it increased continually until it became exceedingly glorious, as she puts it. Then she turns her eyes to the opposite, the other tree, and she notices that it is not surrounded with a belt of light. Instead, it's standing there erect and fixed like a pillar of marble. No matter how strong the wind blew, not a leaf was stirred, not a bough was bent. It just stood there, stiff, scorning the power of the mighty storm. And so she wonders what she's seeing. What can be the meaning of this? And the Lord gives her an interpretation. She says that these are the personalities of her husband and his older brother, Jesse Smith. The stubborn and unyielding tree was like Jesse. The other, more pliant and flexible, was like Joseph, her husband. The breath of heaven that passed over them was the pure and undefiled gospel of the Son of God. This was a gospel that Jesse would always resist, but Joseph, when he was more advanced in life, would hear and receive with his whole heart and rejoice therein. And unto him will be added intelligence, happiness, glory, and everlasting life. Now, I'm a Kabbalist, so when I read this, what I hear is, Lucy Smith is me, my will to receive. She wants to receive light and knowledge, and so do I. And what does she receive? These two trees, a, a dream or vision of these two trees, and they both represent different sides of each of us. We are both Jesse and Joseph. We are both the stubborn, unmoving tree. And we're also the tree that just bends with the wind and dances along with it in the grace of Jesus Christ, doing the things that the Lord asks us to do. I do apologize. Normally, I don't go over an entire chapter of Scripture, and I wasn't reading word for word. But I feel like this story needs to be told in its entirety in order to understand it as a Sabbath message. Because we're told by a lot of people to stand firm, and to be unmovable. But this story tells us the exact opposite. We need to be able to dance in the light of Jesus Christ. 
We need to be blown in the winds of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to be able to hear the salvation of God and flow with it. I think that when we stand strong, like a mighty oak, there's times when that can be beneficial, but the mighty oak gets knocked over in the hurricane while the smaller saplings just get pushed over and then pop right back up when the storm passes. I think that when the storm comes, it's better to find the light of Jesus Christ and move with that, move in the spirit than to try to be obstinate and unmovable and unshakable. Our testimonies in Christ need to be fluid and flexible because this is the restoration of all things and not some things. And I think that one of the reasons why we as Mormons, as the Latter-day Saint people, are unable to fully realize our true potential is because we grab an idea and we hold on to it and we refuse to be moved by the light of Jesus Christ. We refuse to go with the flow of the gospel. We have this idea, this theology, this man-made doctrine that is true over here but isn't true over there. And we're not flexible enough to see the light of Jesus Christ everywhere that it shines. We only want to see it where we are and we ignore the darkness of the shadows that are cast by our inability to be flexible. So what is my Sabbath message today? It's very simple. Be flexible. Be willing to learn. Be willing to grow. Stand firm in the foundation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those roots didn't go anywhere, but the tree danced in the wind. And I believe that we can do this and it's the way that we can, as Latter-day Saints, unite in Christ and acknowledge that there's truth in every aspect of the restoration. And yeah, there's also falsehood. You're welcome to argue that. But let's focus on what's true. Let's find the things we have in common. And let's dance together in the light of Christ and be one people in his name. That is my Sabbath message, and I'll leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.